Hello, today I'm going to try to forge a knife and handle from one of these files without an anvil, forge, or grinder. It's a daunting proposition, so I need to sketch out a plan. We'll hammer this file into a blade and handle using only common tools. That's a lot of work, so I need to psych myself up. I'm going to draw myself an effigy for a pep talk. Now listen up, Steve. It's time to man up. Are you crying because it's hot outside and this is a lot of work? Now you take off that Nancy dress, little girl, and you put on your man pants. You load those guns, and you grab a shovel, and you dig a hole. You line that hole with bricks. And get a hair dryer, because you're going to need some extra heat. Here I'm quenching my Nicholson file in water to check the steel and make sure it's not case hardened. If it's case hardened, it'll bend after quenching. If it's good steel, it should break. We also get to break it to length, which will help with forging. There are many files that work for this. Simons, Belota, or Nicholson are some examples. Here's wood coal I bought for $7 a bag at Walmart. I'm going to try to use that instead of making my own coal. These are my anvils. To the left is a uh, piece of Geneva that I bought at, uh, well, I didn't really buy it, but it came from a landscape supply, and that's a piece of basalt in the middle. A friend gave it to me. He thought it would be nice and flat. So let's crank up this forge and get going. The first thing I usually do is uh, bring the knife to a point or put, put the point on it. Next, we want to put as much curvature in it as we can to shape it like a banana, and we'll curve it towards the cutting edge. The reason for putting the curvature in is that when we hammer in the bevels, it'll push it back the other direction and straighten the knife. Without that curvature, you'll you'll end up uh, pushing the blade in the opposite direction and curving it back towards the spine. And that's okay if that happens. You'll see that it happens a little bit here, and I end up having to do some things to straighten it out. Here you see me doing a little more work on the tip. So I'm trying to get a distal taper in place. This metal is thin enough that if I don't get one, one can be filed in fairly easily. Now I'm going to work on the tang or handle portion. I want to uh, smash this down and draw it out into a long piece of metal that I can use to form a handle with.
Again, this steel looks pretty cold, but it's moving like it's cherry red at least. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Our piece of Geneva stone is holding up very well. Our basalt is not. It's got some cracks in it. It's dusk now and it's much easier to see the temperatures, thankfully. You can see that I was probably getting it hotter than it looked on the previous video. This file is thin to start with, so it uh, the heat dissipates quickly, but also it, it heats up rather quickly in the fire, which is nice. It's just difficult to position in the forge where different portions of the tang must be heated in order to work on them. The result is that I spend a lot of time shifting coals and repositioning the knife and hair dryer, etc. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. It's day two and we only have a little bit of coal left. My wife hasn't decided if her hairdryer can be used again because the end of it is melting. It seems she cannot be convinced to shave her head. I'm going to try to do a lot of the straightening on a brick. It's got a perfectly flat surface. The hammer blows here are light enough that the brick should hold up. The knife will cool in hot coals to anneal and, and get as soft as possible before we start filing. In my last do-it-yourself video, I had a lot of comments about my filing technique. And before you guys say anything, I need you to know something. I hold an advanced degree in file mongering from Oxford University where I was a Rhodes Scholar. I'm a member of the World File Society. Uh, not many people know I'm the head curator of the Smithsonian's uh, famous Bastards of History collection. That's a 2300-piece menagerie of well-known bastard files dating back to the 4th century. My silverware drawer at home has no silverware in it, only files. I brush my teeth with files. I wipe with files. So I know more about files than you. No, I don't. I Seriously, I appreciate uh, everyone who's trying to keep me straight and uh, make me more adept at my tools. Thanks for your comments. I'm using a uh, larger Simons multi-use file for the bevels and it's making quick work of that job. Turned out pretty straight. Now it's time to heat treat. Remember we're going to bring it to a red, slightly orange color where it would be non-magnetic and then quench it in oil. We'll temper it at uh, 375 degrees 
for an hour twice. I've never shaped a handle like this before, so I have some ideas on how to do it. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what works. I'm trying my best to keep it flat and straight. It looks sort of silly, some of the things I'm doing, but I don't want to upset the edges with a metal hammer. You know, I'd like to keep sort of that square squareness to it. So I'm trying some things that hopefully won't deform it. It's a bit of a challenge to um, get the part of the the tang that I want to work with in the fire and heated to the right temperature. So I'm I'm again having to move coals around quite a bit and uh, spend a lot of time positioning the hairdryer and things like that. This is taking a much longer time than I thought it would. I've had to switch to regular charcoal at this point because I'm out of the uh, wood coal that I bought. So the astute observer will note I've ruined the heat treat by not shaping the far end of the tank first and then working my way towards the blade. I've had to, you know, again, maneuver it in the fire in, in, in different ways that I really didn't want to. So I will heat treat it again. There's no point in showing it to you, so I didn't film it. I'm going to sand it to 600 grit. Although the short handle fits my palm well, I've decided to lengthen it. It should be easy. I can do this by making two bins, one at the upper left corner and to open it up, and then at the upper right corner, as you see it on the screen, to, to lengthen it. Um, so two bins it shouldn't take that long. You could definitely spend some more time filing down the sides and taking out the file marks and forge marks. It's the type of thing I sort of like in these projects. It makes makes you aware uh, of how it was made. It turned out pretty straight. I'm happy with that. You can see it's not perfect. The handle uh, is nice and springy. It's pretty comfortable actually and it accommodates several different hand grips. This project took a very long time, and as usual, I learned many things that will help uh, speed the process next time. So I've had a lot of fun, guys, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.